be illegal to do it here in Georgia? Any, anytime you distill it, it becomes illegal. Now you can make that beer. You can make that whole 300 gallons of beer right there. Nobody can buy it. But once you put fire to it, start collecting steam. That's, that's, that's it. That's yeah, distillation. That's, that's an illegal activity. Yeah, they let us set this up down here to check out the Back in the back in the forties and fifties. Are you actually making it? No. Okay. But <laughs> back in the forties and fifties and sixties, this is the steel you would find on these creeks around here. Okay. And they were plenty up. Uh, they were thousands and thousands of gallons. Uh, my family uh, made it. Just everybody. Every day. Yeah. If he was a farmer, he more than likely had a steel somewhere. He farmed during the day and make moonshine at night to help support the family. And just keep the smoke from rising so nobody catches it. Yeah, well, it wasn't too bad. Back in the 30s and 40s, everybody used fireplaces. That was the main source of heat back then in the rural areas. So they didn't really pay smoke. Oh, because so much smoke. Huh? Yeah. So oh. when after World War II, they came out with a gas burner. What happened was some of our guys from here went to France and Germany and different places in the military. And they saw all these gas burners being used. So they brought the idea back with them to make their own burners. And for a long time, we used car gas as a source of energy. We would make our own burners, and then we'd pressurize that gas. We'd take like a 30-gallon oil drum, fill it up with gas, and put an air valve in it, we'd pump air into it. And then you could turn the burner on, throw a match to it. Now, it would smoke for a little while, but after it got hot, after the gas got hot, it wouldn't smoke anymore. And a lot of times, people would go in at like 4 o'clock in the morning and start. And by the time they got daylight, there wasn't no smoke. Pizza do it, all smoke was clear. Well, the ones I've seen now on TV, actually this is TV, right. they're always copper. Yeah, well, a lot of them, not, usually these bigger steels weren't copper. And we've got a copper steel, you see that one over there? Yeah, a small one. Yeah, that's a little portable steel that you see typically up in North Carolina. That's the way it's portrayed in the movies, at least, on yeah. TV. But, yeah. but down here, this would be a small steel in the field, I mean, Usually, when they were making liquor back here in the 50s and 60s, they made what they called 10 sacks. They had eight foot wide heads on them, and they would hold a thousand pounds of sugar, but they were turning out 150 gallons per run. This here really is like, this. say you wanted to get started in the business, you didn't have a whole lot of money, you could put one this size, and then work your way up if you got money and you can, you can build a bigger steel. Well, where did you get your ingredients without the state trooper knowing it? Well, back then, you could buy sugar without any trouble, you know, until they passed that law that oh, you had wow. to sign. Yeah. So yeah. Much there. Then but, they started bringing it in from Savannah on the tractor trailer load. Yeah, they, uh, they were ways to get it. If you were in that business, some of the, you figure out a way. Somebody always thought, I'm going down with a pickup truck loaded with the sugar <laughs> past the state trooper. And he said, yeah, we're just going home. Well, they, they look at you funny now. If you get too much sugar, you go in a grocery store and buy 35 pounds of sugar. The first thing they're going to say. Carry it through Walmart on Sunday morning and see how many of them older folks don't stare at you. No. I was standing in line. I, had a, I just had some sugar. I had it on my shoulder. An old man tapped me on the shoulder and said, where y'all making it at? <laughs> I said, I said, oh, what are you talking about? I'm just going to make some jelly. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, he said, you bet you are. <laughs> well, thank you. That yeah, was very welcome. educational. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I got to tell this fellow a story about a drug bust. I seen him go down here while I was in the village now the time I get home this evening. And you think you're going to ride them and wash them, well, you go play I'll tell you something. I'll tell you when it ain't He'd get fun. home before you got through and he'd add another When heart. that car pulls in there on a January night about 4 o'clock in the morning and the ice all over it, when you got 300 gallons on it, you got to get it off and get it down in the woods. Yeah. And that's when it ain't fun. I remember we had a stack over there right where Hart's house there. Well, we, I call it Hart's house. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, that little thicket of pines in there. I remember a stack in there. It was at least tall as the highest point on that little building and probably 20 foot long and 20 foot wide, just square. I've seen, I've seen that stack, but, I, but the one I saw was there where Judy's house is. You know, that yeah, little pine yeah, thicket yeah, between yeah, where this, this was up there where Hart was at. And see, Daddy and them, somebody come, they drive up beside, well, they're living at Paul's house, and they drive up through there, or Grim you yeah. know, the old house. Even when we moved in the brick house, so you I, still kept it over I there. I went up to Statues where they'd be twice as big as that yeah, building right yeah. there. Box stacked yeah. up. Coca Cola box. Yeah. And he'd tell us when he brought them over Coca Cola bottles in there, 
you better not break one and you better not get them boxes wet because they needed them boxes to go to jugs. You know? You've been coating your foot. And I, back then we had these old burlap bags. Put <coughs> sack. Crumper sack. Crumper sack, yeah, that's what we used to call them. But you can put six of them in a sack and coat two in your hand. Run your finger through them. And you'd be going up through there and crack one of them. you feel it running down your back. <laughs> I feel that like liquor going all the way down yeah. your drawers, you know. You, <laughs> you know, if you, 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 you stay in one place too long making liquor, it'd make a path. You know? Yeah. And we'd have to, we'd have to, like I say, we'd have to walk different paths every time. But then we'd have to, if we got too bad, we'd take ammonia nitrate in a bucket. Broadcast, get, get the grass growing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like you walk through there and you walk around that limb, you duck and go under it, you wouldn't break that limb off because you didn't want to leave a sign, you know. You used to mark the fields, like, say this, this one here, the barrels and everything's off up and they lay a piece of tin or something over that hole right there. Take a penny or something and put on the corner of, it, of that tin. And if the law coming out, they probably wouldn't see it. They'd lift that tin up and move it, you know, or anybody. And then you go back, and if that penny wasn't where it's supposed to be, then you knew somebody had done looked in it. Cause the revenue, they would look in them to see when they could determine when they were going to be ready to run. So they could go ahead and get their men set up and knew about when it was going to be ready, you know. And uh, they camp out in the woods on you. They'd stay out in the woods, camp out and watch for you. Just camp on, trying to stop, stop you know, get <laughs> yeah. I looked back and the flame done got bigger. <laughs> I said, there, that house is on fire. So we dropped the gas can and the hose and ran to the house across the road. And I knew that girl, that woman lived there, you know, and I'm beating on the door. While I'm beating on the door, the, the porch starts caving in on it. So I, I jumped off the porch, got away from it. The house burned down. Well, her car was there. I knew she was in the house. And there we are, drunk, standing out there. And had to call, we had to call 9 or law or whoever we had to call back then, you know. Well... They sent the deputies out there and fire trucks and they sent uh, uh, Moel, because he was a coroner. They sent him out there. Well, we stand in there drunk. That little old Rowan, y'all don't know you remember that little old Bobby Rowan's brother. Danny? Yeah, yeah he I know about, Danny. About that tall, had a hat this big on yeah. <laughs> And we are trying to look, you know how two drunks are. We look at all this, when the flames died down, we are trying to find the body. <laughs> well, he, he pushed me, you see. Get away. You're going to get hurt. Get away. Well, out of instinct, I pushed him. Pushed him in the fire. Big old hat and all. Went down in the ashes. <laughs> and they get in there. They get in there and I, they say, yeah, we found the body. Well, I'm looking. I said, that ain't no human. I said, that's a dog. Had four hey. legs on it. It's going off. And CJ, he looked at it. No, nah, that's a dog. Well, they keep Going yeah, I'm going to put the trailer Here it is over yeah. here. Here's the body. Well, I'm over there and I'm looking, right. you know. Wonder if it had locked us up. I said, no, All that's right. a dog, okay. too. They found three right. burned up dogs. The woman wasn't at home. Somebody had come picked her up and took her off. <laughs> <laughs> what the, every time they found one, they found the body. But three I'm over there. dogs are too drunk. And, I, yeah, <laughs> and I'm over there drunk. And no, that's a dog. It's got too many legs. You know. <laughs> Would have had to lock us up. I hit. I pushed him. That little rolling boy. He pushed me. Trying to. I guess he was trying to protect me. You know. And I pushed him back, and he was off down in the fire. He went. <laughs> yeah, he used to call. He used to haul his guitar around the back of the police car. Yeah. You do that now, you'd be in jail. I so know. Long, but yeah, he used to. He used. You know, he claimed to be a singer at one time. He used. We come everybody together around the courthouse square at night. I can take the girls home. He'd pull up there with his, get out with his guitar, and he'd sing, or he'd... You know, I, I've been looking at it, because I, I, that's one of the things locked me up a million times. Me and my brother, Kojak, went to a Christmas party one night. Down here at the stone yard, down here on 92, they used to throw a little Christmas party every year. Well, we'd go down there, and we'd all drink, party, have a good time. We got down there, and we drank too much. No. Yeah, and I, I got into some uh, brandy, some kind of uh, blackberry brandy or something. I don't know, but... I, but anyway, Mike, boy, it works for me. He don't drink, so he was driving for us. He brought us home. Well, Jack had an old 67 Ford truck, and it had a, like a 427 or 429 or something. I don't know what it was, a fast old truck. Pulled up in my yard. And in the meantime, though, they had picked up a woman. 
put her on the back of the truck, and here I am about passed out. They put me on the back with her. Drive me right up to my front door and blow the horn. My wife comes to the door. And here I'm staggering around trying to get out. Don't even know there's a woman on the truck. Semi-hauling hogs. Yeah. Well, that, that put me in hot water right then, you know, so. I know Jack, she didn't believe it. No. Don't believe it till the day. <laughs> and uh, Jack, he had his truck at the house, so he gets the old gal off. I think there was an old woman in the front. Yeah, her was. mama. I think they had the mama <laughs> in the front. Too. Mama was in the front. They get in the truck with Jack. Well, here I am fussing with my wife out there. You know, I ain't. I don't know what's going on. She says my zipper's undone, and I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Jack, he leaves out. Well, he gets down there, just comes up into my driveway, and he turns on Bethel Road. Bam! I heard it. He turned the truck over down there. <laughs> just rolled it. Well, here I am. I'm going down, you know. Well, I go down. I jump in my pickup. I had old Chevrolet truck. I went down through there, and they all scattered out out there in the field. I got Jack up. He done cut his arm nearly off. And the girl, she was all right, but the old woman, she was just lay there. She was dead. Well, I get down. I try to talk to her. I, she, you know, working on it. She told her what I was doing, but I was working on it. Well, I got her, too, and I got a drug back, you know. By that time, police, fire department, everybody got that. And uh, some of them, the old truck was leaking gas. It was turned over and it was leaking gas. And I heard one of them say, we got to get this truck turned back over. Said it's going to catch on fire. And like a fool, I get in my truck and I back up and I throw the chain over the... And snatch it. They holler, don't do it, don't do it. And I done done it, you know. I just, <laughs> just roll that thing over. And... Uh, I'm so drunk, I don't even know half what's going on, but but one of the cops asked me, said, do you want to take him to the hospital or do you want us to take him? I said, I don't know, but I think y'all better take him. 